Welcome to Radical Wellness TV. Find us on YouTube and other platforms. And we are talking about sometimes God has a kid's face. And what this is, this video is about kids on the street and their stories. <clears throat> this was written in 2010 in honor of Sister Mary Rose McGee. She helped a lot of the children out. Now they're functioning adults. Chapter 2. It's okay if I stay an extra night, she asked. I'm not afraid because I don't know what's out there, sister. I'm scared for a different reason, she said. I'm scared because I do know what's out there. I know, and I'm scared. That's why I can't leave. I just can't. Kathleen stood in the doorway of her room, Covenant House, with her hands planted squarely on either side of the doorframe, as if she were afraid I was going to try to physically drag her from her room. Her bright blue eyes were wide with fear and determination. Kathleen, it's okay. Someone will go with you. You won't be alone. You said you wanted to do this. <clears throat> I know. I know I did. And I do. I know I need to be on my own. I mean, I know I can't live here forever. But can't I stay a little longer? You know, I always thought things were bad at home when my dad would get drunk and beat me and things like that. Or when my mom would be drugged out and scary. Even if it was even worse on the street. I mean, everyone was drunk or drugged out. And they all wanted something. You know what I mean? I don't know if I can describe it, but I don't think <clears throat> I was ever, even for a second, not scared when I was out on the street. She paused to look deep into my eyes. She wanted to make sure I was following her, that I understood, that I knew, absolutely knew, the incredible fear she felt inside. I looked into her eyes and I tried my best to comfort her. I could feel my mind racing a mile a minute, imagining what was causing the terror bubbling inside of her. It wasn't too hard imagining what those once innocent eyes had seen on the streets. I've seen those eyes a thousand times before. Like so many of our kids, she has run to the streets to escape a wretched and dangerous life at home. At first, I'm sure Kathleen's eyes could only see better days ahead. A life finally fred from the day-to-day -day abuse and terror that was slowly killing her at home. But then reality of the street caught up with her. It always does. Always. After only a couple of days, she began to realize that she was now utterly and completely alone. What had once been the world's simplest question became impossible to answer. Where am I going to sleep tonight? What am I going to eat? Can I make it on my own? Is there anyone in this world who cares? Her world, her entire huge world, was now suddenly empty of even one person she could lean on. Can you imagine what that must be like? Can you imagine how that must might change the way you would see the world? Her eyes began to see trash cans filled with old food. Now she began to wonder if she should just take a bite. Her stomach ached. She was so hungry. Maybe just a bite. Her eyes saw old men asking for unspeakable favors. And she suddenly began to wonder if maybe, just maybe, she could close her eyes for a moment and give herself up. Her pockets were empty. She desperately needed money. She had nothing. She had to do something. Her eyes suddenly began to see a world so decent. Her eyes suddenly began to see a world no decent person, let alone a kid, should ever have to see and face. A world that was dark and dangerous and unforgiving and unfriendly and unrelenting. A world that literally chews up and devours innocent kids. That's what I'm sure Kathleen's eyes has seen on the street. And it's precisely why they were laced with fear now. The very idea of leaving Covenant House and maybe one day seeing any part of that awful world again froze her with terror. It happens to all of our kids. Some of them, the strongest ones, can somehow forget about it or at least put it back into an airtight part of their memory where they never have to revisit it again. For a lot of the other kids like Kathleen, it's harder to forget. One of the biggest lessons we all learn at Covenant House after saving kids is that we first have to about saving kids is that we first have to somehow save them from their fears. That's what Kathleen needed most of all. I know why you feel this way, Kathleen, I said. I know how tough it can be going back out there. We can take get a little slower if you'd like. Her eyes softened for a moment and seemed to relax. But I want you to realize something very important, I said. It's different now. You're different now. Your entire support system is different now, I said. Then she when you go outside those do these doors again, it will not be the same world. And it will not be the same you. You'll always know that you're, we're here for you, I told her. You didn't know that before. She nodded her head quietly to say she understood. Pools of tears were beginning to form in her eyes. And you 
Have someone else you can rely on more than ever, and that's you, I said. You know now how good you are, how smart you are, and how much you have to offer this world, I said. You know how much we all believe in you. You're right, she whispered very softly. I didn't really, really know that before. She wiped away the tears that were now streaming down her face. I could see she now understood that her time at Covenant House had truly changed everything in her world and inside her too. Is it still okay if I stay an extra night, she asked. Just one more, she said. Then I'll be all right. I'd like that, I said. Thanks, she said. She turned for a second to leave, then, but then turned back and gave me a quick, self-conscious hug. Bye, she said. Tomorrow her new life begins. I'll be praying for her extra heart. Just as surely as she couldn't be beginning a new life without Covenant House, she wouldn't be starting a new life without your help too. Please, will you pray for her if you can? Kathleen hasn't been outside of the Covenant House since she came to us. I'm worried about her, but I think she's going to be okay, to do okay. She has a long way to go, and she is really terrified of being alone again, but I think she will make it. Thank you for praying for her, too, and for doing all you've done for her, to help her so far. So this is the, the Sister Mary talking about sometimes God has a kid's face and about homeless children back in 2010. Love life, and life will love you back. Let's kick the kids straight. We'll see you in Chapter 3 or 4. Let me see. Chapter 3.